Hey Picklers, if you enjoyed this instructional video, do me a favor, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on. Okay guys, these are drills for lower levels, 2.5 and 3.0. Uh, the first drill that we're going to be talking about today, it's going to be for uh, hitting a slice push dink. Okay, um, so since this is lower levels and since we're working on technique here and we, and we want to uh, focus on the fundamentals, we're going to be in a very stationary position. In the first progression of this drill, you're going to be uh, dropping to yourself. It's going to look just like this. I have cones over here. I'm not going to use the cones yet. Um, but first drill is going to be, um, we're just working on the technique. We're working on the swing path. Um, and we're just getting comfortable uh, in this three to nine window. Okay, so slice stink, paddles upright, that's nice and cocked. Um, I want my uh, wrist kind of in like a fist position here, so I'm nice and strong. With me being in a fist position and add so, um, and add some more engagement in my shoulder. So as I'm um, as I'm hitting these slice dinks, okay, I am aiming just towards like the middle uh, middle of the box there. Um, I have one cone at the center hash. I have the other cone on the sideline. Uh, I'm not aiming for a direction now, just more so working on the technique. Okay. Um, as I hit the push dink as well, I'm letting the ball sit up at the apex and then I'm making contact. Letting the ball sit up at the apex and then I'm making contact. See how I'm not uh, chopping wood. There is no Nike swoosh. Uh, it's on this nice level plane. And I'm taking into consideration that the paddle is doing all the work. Uh, less is a lot more here and know that you can only get a little bit of spin. Um, and, and know that like a little bit of spin goes a long ways. Why? These paddles just simply don't have a lot of grit on them. Okay. Um, so letting the ball sit up on the apex. Okay. Dropping and hitting, slice push dinks. I'm going to do about, um, let's say five to ten of these. Just get comfortable. Also, to get get comfortable with the technique, get comfortable with the weight transfer from the outside leg to the inside leg, and then also too, with me hitting a slice push dink, let's get comfortable with finding the correct distance or finding the correct location in which you should dink in. Um, anytime that we're hitting a push dink, that usually adds up to forcing your opponent to, to feel indecisive. With them feeling indecisive, you want to aim a little. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna walk on this side here real quick, but. Um, um, I, I have my cones positioned um, kind of where that pressurized alleyway is. So as I'm hitting this push dink, um, let's say this comes out like a, like a foot here, I want to be aiming towards this little alleyway. And when my opponent's leaning in here, uh, this is like the, the prime area where it's going to force them to feel indecisive. So I'm aiming a little deeper, aiming a little deeper, going three to nine keeping this nice and level. Okay, so now that I've got my five or ten on the right, now I'm going to move to the left side of the court, get some backhand slice push dinks in. Same idea here, tossing the ball up high, letting it sit on, uh, let it sit on the apex. Okay, and then I am, uh, you didn't get that, I am moving through it. Same idea here, wrist is up and cocked, paddle face is nice and level, I'm getting natural spin, I'm not over creating. I'm not coming up with the wrist. Everything is nice and still. Also, too, I'm keeping the overall swing path inside my hips. I could have a ball in my armpit. I could have a ball in my armpit and hit this push dink in this fashion. Okay, again. So I don't have to overdo it. I can still keep the ball inside my armpit. I don't have to come outside of that window. Um, leading with the knuckles, same thing. Leading with the knuckles, keeping the hand positioning, facing at my target. Okay, nine to three, aiming a little deeper, trying to find, trying to find that pressurized zone. Again, again, again. Perfect. All right, guys, third progression here. Um, so drill's gonna be uh, both uh, Jim and I are, are, are gonna be dinking back and forth. Uh, we're gonna be looking for ways to be offensive and to hit more push dinks when necessary. Um, also, too, something that we're adding onto this drill is that uh, we have cones, uh, cones located uh, to, to make a little alleyway in the outside sideline of the court. So we're going to call this the outside quadrant. We're also going to call this the outside quadrant. So any time that we're dinking back and forth and we get pulled out in the outside quadrant, uh, and we feel like we're on the defensive or like we feel like we're scrambling and we're looking to uh, play a high percentage ball, that high percentage ball should be located back in the middle. 
So plain and simple, we're going to be dinking back and forth, looking to be offensive with our dinking um, uh, when necessary. But also too, if we get pulled out of position, we are looking to reset that dink back in the middle if it uh, was in the outside quadrant. Um, another little spin off in this, in this drill is that if Jim goes too wide and I, and I have some, um, and I have the ATP available, I can, I can look to work on my ATP if I get pulled out of position, okay? Um, Jim, you ready? Ready. Okay, dinking back and forth, nice and easy. So we're, so we're uh, both looking to hit our slice push dinks here. Oh, God, get my ass moving here. Okay, slice push dinks, slice push dinks. Ready here, here we go. Okay, moving the ball around. You're fine, Norris. Good, giving myself enough time. Give myself enough time. There we go. That's okay, no worries. I pulled Jim out in the outside quadrant. Again, again, again. He pulls me out of position, I reset back in the middle. Again, push. Again, give myself enough time, push. Nice. Okay, here we go. Pushing, alternating feet. Slice. Okay, outside quadrant, reset back in the middle. Slice. Reset back in the middle. Good, push. So you see how I'm only pushing when the ball is up in my yellow zone and I'm only uh, looking to push when I have time. Anytime that uh, Jim was able to move me around, get me off balance, I was always looking to lift back. Ready here, okay, same drill here, other side. Okay, okay, S slice, push, dinks. Sorry. Okay, reset back in the middle, he pulled me out of position. Again, reset back in the middle, he pulled me out of position. Reset back in the middle, he pulled me out of position. Reset back in the middle, give myself more time. There we go. Oh, he's switching hands on me, huh? And hey, so anytime, so I guess this is when I know that I'm looking to push. When I see my opponent give themselves less time and lean in and then have to take this ball as a half volley, usually that, that results in them lifting it up, uh, giving, your, uh, giving themselves plenty of margin for error. So I'm always looking, not always, but um, when, I, when I see that image and I see them taking a ball as a half volley, nine times out of ten, if they're taking a ball in their red zone, it's probably going to end up being a lift. So with that being said, that puts me in a position where I can let the ball sit up a little higher off of that lift and I can look to push back. Let's go a couple more here. Okay, inside the hips. See that there again? Good. Give myself time. Hey, hey, get off my cone over there. My cone is right. Uh-huh. Ah. Oh. Oh, sorry. My fault, my fault, my fault. Oh, it's good ball. Don't watch that. Up, up. Nice. Good. Nice. Good. Awesome. All right, guys. First drill here. Um, I'm acting as a student. My job is to be hitting push dinks uh, with using uh, slice spin. Uh, my uh, teacher's job here is to be hitting push dinks and just putting dinks in play. Um, keep in mind some of the, some of the technical uh, things that we're working on on the push dink is giving ourselves enough time, um, uh, recognizing that if we don't have time or if we're off balance or if we're in the wrong location that there's no need to hit a push dink. Um, and then also too, keeping, keeping the theme of three to nine, keeping it nice and level. Um, I also like to, like to talk about if there's a ball in my armpit, I should be able to keep that ball in my armpit as I hit a push dink. Why? Because my technique is going to be inside my hips. I think uh, another common tendency is people tend to take too big of a swing in here and don't recognize that less is a lot more and I can get plenty on my push dink just from inside my hips versus going outside the hips, okay? Um, so, uh, push dink here, I'm going cross court. Uh, technique is gonna be three to nine. 
slice push dink. I'm keeping keeping this elbow nice and lodged. I'm aiming a little aiming a little lower over the net. Okay? And as I aim a little lower, my job is to be aiming for this, you know, we'll, we'll call this like the pressurized zone. Uh, if, if I were to take this out a foot, this little zone in here, a, a foot out from the kitchen line, is going to be the pressurized zone. I can force my opponent to feel indecisive if I can aim a little deeper in the kitchen. So my role here is to force my opponent to kind of feel indecisive by using that three to nine technique, using slice, and also, uh, more importantly, keeping the dink a little deeper. Okay, ready here? So first, so I can, I can go anywhere. My uh, main, main objective is just moving him and keeping the ball down and, and keeping that slice under spin. Okay, so Jim will go same thing other side though. Same thing other side. Okay, now on, on the backhand side, I'm gonna be going nine to three. Nine to three, see that there? Again, nine to three, again. Okay, nine to three, nine to three. So I, I didn't have time. See, see that last ball? Any time that I feel like the ball gets on me too quick, it's, it's nearly impossible to be offensive back. So if I recognize that I'm dealing with the ball in here and it gets on me quick, all I can do is lift, okay? You, utilize your push dink when you can see the ball sooner or when you have enough time, okay? Ready here? I have time. I have time, I have time, again, slice, again, slice, 93, again, 93, see that there? But as I, as I slice, I'm not breaking up my wrist, uh, I'm not adding in too much movement with my upper extremities, I'm keeping the upper extremities nice and still, if there's a bowl on top of my head, I'm keeping, keeping the bowl there, um, and, and main focus is I'm loading off the uh, outside foot, keeping it inside of my hips, and then really driving forward in that nine to three type swing. Second drill here, I'm still pushing as a student. My uh, partner here is gonna be acting as a teacher. They're still lifting, okay? My job now is to be utilizing push stinks, but I'm gonna alternate feet. So I would go one to the inside foot, one to the outside foot. So I really have to get my feet in the, in the correct position here to try to be offensive with my dinks and to alternate feet. Jim, ready here? Okay, outside foot. Okay, here we go, inside foot. Okay, outside foot. Inside foot. Outside foot. Okay, inside foot. Outside foot. Inside foot. Outside foot. Okay, we'll go other side here, Jim, other side. Same thing, alternating feet. Now we're getting comfortable with, with, uh, with direction on our push dink. Inside foot, outside foot, inside foot, outside foot. Nice, Jim. Inside foot, outside foot. Beautiful, beautiful. Inside foot, outside foot, inside, outside. Ah, very good. I like it. Hey Picklers, if you enjoyed this instructional video, do me a favor, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on.